Nuclear power has done amazing things for us. It provides the energy that powers our towns, cities, and industries. Not everybody loves it because it can be dangerous and toxic if handled incorrectly. But until a more efficient way of generating power can be found, it's here to stay. Just because the idea is here to stay doesn't mean that all the factories get to stick around, though. The world is dotted with abandoned nuclear power stations that take on an eerie atmosphere like vast, forgotten energy cathedrals. We've gathered the most incredible examples of them together for you in this video. Our journey begins in France, at the site of the old Brenillis nuclear power plant in the Mons d'Ari. For its time, this was an experimental facility, with a reactor cooled with carbon dioxide and moderated with heavy water. Back then, it was considered to be a revolutionary system. Construction work at the site began in 1962 and became fully operational in 1966. Sadly, the experimental reactor wasn't the success that the French government had been hoping for, and it was replaced with a more conventional, American pressurized water reactor in 1971. The Brunelis plant is notable for surviving not one, but two terrorist attacks. The first, in 1975, damaged a turbine. The second involved the destruction of the electrical lines that connected the plant to the country's power grid and briefly rendered the plant inoperable. The Liberation Front of Brittany claimed responsibility for both attacks. By 1985, the plant was showing its age, and so it was decommissioned. Although dismantling work is yet to be completed, more than 30 years later. When Germany was separated into two countries, East and West, the Griefswald nuclear power plant was the single largest nuclear power facility in East Germany. It owed its VVER 440-V230 design to Soviet research and construction plans, which may explain why the government was so keen to decommission it shortly after German reunification in 1990. That was only part of the reason, though. The plant had been up and running since 1974, and was considered old and dangerous. An electrical fault only one year after the plant came online started a fire and nearly caused a disaster. And then, in November 1989, it came perilously close to a meltdown after a water pump broke down and engineers briefly lost control of the reactor. Ten fuel elements were damaged in the incident, and the plant never truly recovered. During its peak years, Griefswald provided employment to 10,000 workers. Even today, there are still 1,000 people working there, tasked with safely dismantling the site. Whether you think the Kozlodoy nuclear power plant in Bulgaria is actually abandoned or not depends on who you listen to. It's officially listed as operational, but for more than 10 years, it's been switching between partial and total shutdown. As Bulgaria's only nuclear power plant, it was a source of national pride when it was commissioned in 1974. But it has a long and troubling history of difficulties and incidents. Four of the site's older reactors are of an old Soviet design, considered to be dangerous and unreliable by the European Commission. And Units 1 and 2 were taken offline at the start of 2004. Units 3 and 4 followed at the end of 2006 as a condition of Bulgaria's entry to the European Union. Two units remain operational, and there's a chance that the site may soon receive a significant upgrade. Plans for a second nuclear power plant have been abandoned, and the technology that would have been used in the construction of the proposed new plant may now be implemented at Kozlodoy instead. Until then, Vast swaths of the site will remain abandoned and closed off. The most famous abandoned nuclear power plant in the world is the Chernobyl facility in Ukraine, although it's famous only for the most terrible of reasons. This was the site of the most notorious and deadly nuclear power station accident in world history in April 1986, when the core of reactor number 4 exploded during what should have been a routine test. The cloud of radiation caused by the explosion traveled all over Europe, getting as far as Norway. What few people realize is that further accidents occurred after the 1986 disaster. There was a fire in the turbine hall of the second reactor in 1991, which permanently shut it down. And then a portion of roofing at the disused facility collapsed in February 2013. 
It wasn't until the year 2000 that the final reactor was shut down, and Chernobyl finally went offline completely. Even now, so many years after the disaster, an exclusion zone is enforced around the plant, and the workers responsible for decommissioning the site have to wear special anti-radiation clothing to protect them from harm. It's hoped that the nuclear cleanup operation will finally be completed by the year 2065. Canada's Gentilly Nuclear Generating Station is home to two nuclear reactors, and they're the only power-generating reactors to be found anywhere in their native Quebec. At one stage, the government had a plan to build up to 30 nuclear reactors within the region, but issues with Gentilly put them off the idea. The first reactor at the site, an experimental 250-megawatt CANDU BRW prototype, was shut down in 1977 before the plant was even officially commissioned. Its replacement was more successful and remained online from 1983 to 2012. It might even still be running today had the government not run out of money. $2 billion was allocated to Gentilly to refurbish and modernize the facility in 2008. But four years later, Quebec Premier Pauline Marois announced that the government had changed their mind and that Gentilly would shut down instead. Even shutting the station down is an expensive task. The decommissioning process will take approximately 50 years of work and will cost only $200 million less than the refurbishment project. When a nuclear disaster happens somewhere in the world, it causes every national government in every nation to look at their own nuclear facilities with fresh eyes and ask themselves difficult questions about safety and sustainability. That accounts for the closure of the Brunsbüttel nuclear power plant in Schleswig-Holstein, Germany. Until 2011, everything was going well for the plant and the people who worked at it. The site came online in 1977 and stayed online until 2007, when it was shut down for much-needed modernization work. At the end of 2010, it was decided that the work would go ahead, and once it was complete, Brunsbüttel would be fit to stay active for at least another 12 years. Just a few short months later, the Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan happened. The German government responded by imposing a moratorium on its seven oldest nuclear power facilities, and Brunsbüttel was unfortunate enough to be on that list. Germany has since decided to end its reliance on nuclear power, and that means Brunsbüttel will never come back online. Every nuclear power facility in the country will follow suit by the end of 2022. All of the sites we've looked at so far were at least operational for a few years. Juragua nuclear power plant in Cuba was never online for a single day. The opening of the facility was a collaborative effort between the government of Cuba and its communist allies in the USSR. With construction work commencing in 1983 after several years of negotiations, Eight years later, with the work still ongoing, the Soviet Union dissolved. That left Cuba without the financial or strategic assistance it required to complete the building work, and so they had to take the embarrassing decision to decommission their unused facility in 1992. Close to the site is a small town called Cuidad Nuclear, which was built specifically to house the people that were to work at Juragua. Today, almost 30 years later, there are still people living in those houses. Although rumors persisted for years that Russia would eventually commit to finishing the site and its reactors, Fidel Castro and Vladimir Putin jointly announced the abandonment of the project following a summit in the year 2000. There may only ever have been one nuclear power station in Quebec, but that wasn't the only nuclear power facility in all of Canada. Douglas Point Nuclear Generation Station holds the title of being Canada's first ever nuclear power plant, and it has a long and distinguished service history. Having been built in 1960 and commissioned in 1968, Douglas Point kept running until May 1984 and is considered to be a template for the Canadian nuclear industry that exists today. Its achievements are all the more impressive considering its troubled first few years. Water leakage was a frequent issue at the site, 
forcing several shutdowns and eventually causing it to spend 50% of its time between 1968 and 1971 offline. Once those difficulties were overcome, it ran smoothly. But when Pickering Nuclear Generating Station became fully operational during the early 1980s, it made Douglas Point look like an antique by comparison, and decommissioning of the older site became inevitable. The old buildings now sit within the much newer Bruce Nuclear Generating Station, although they're derelict. People's feelings about nuclear power have changed over time. The construction of nuclear facilities was largely welcomed during the 1960s. Reception to nuclear plans had become a little more tepid by the 1970s, and by the 1980s large parts of the public were openly hostile to them. Because of that changing attitude, the Super Phoenix facility on France's Rhone River was never truly accepted or wanted by the people it was built to serve. Public protests greeted the commencement of construction work in 1974, and negative press coverage of numerous building delays and rapidly spiraling costs did little to improve the perception of the project. Building work finished in 1980, but a series of court challenges and practical problems meant that the site didn't come online until 1986. Even when it eventually turned on, the poorly designed site struggled to reach 7% of its supposed operational capacity. It was performing much better by 1996 after expensive repair work, but it shut down in December that year for further maintenance and was hit by another legal claim aimed at taking it offline permanently. New French Prime Minister Lionel Jospin decided Super Phoenix wasn't worth the costs or the problems it constantly attracted, and ordered it to be closed permanently in 1997. A little earlier on, we looked at the Brunsbüttel nuclear facility in Germany, and how the Fukushima disaster had caused the German government to get cold feet about the idea of using nuclear power in the future. Biblis nuclear power plant was another victim of that period of reflection. The site, which contains two pressurized water reactors cooled by the mighty Rhine River, began operations in August 1974 and continued to serve Germany faithfully until it was shut down in accordance with the post-Fukushima moratorium in 2011. Interestingly, it was later determined that the order to shut Bibli down was unlawful. A German court issued a ruling in 2013 that declared RWE, the company responsible for the operation of the plant, hadn't been given sufficient chance to reply to the closure order, and the order was therefore invalid. Despite that finding, no attempt has ever been made to reopen Bibli in the seven years since then. Given its age, it will probably now remain in its current state of closure and abandonment. We've mentioned the Fukushima disaster a few times now, so let's be clear what we're talking about. The disaster happened at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan on March 11, 2011. Unlike the Chernobyl disaster, which was caused by human error, the meltdown at Fukushima happened because of something beyond human control, an enormous earthquake that happened in the sea close to the coastal site of the station. The earthquake had a magnitude of 9.0, and a combination of that and the enormous tsunami that followed in its wake wreaked havoc on the facility. All of the reactor cooling systems were taken offline, resulting in a radiation leak which is still happening now in 2020. A 20-mile exclusion zone was immediately declared, and it's still illegal to go within 12 miles of the site without government approval today. The site is permanently offline, and decommissioning work will take somewhere between 30 and 40 years. Because the plant is still leaking radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean, an enormous underground wall of ice was built around the perimeter of the site in 2016. Sadly, it was only partially effective, and the problem persists. The specter of nuclear disasters of the past understandably looms large when we consider the nuclear power facilities of the present. There was technically nothing wrong with the Ignalina nuclear power plant in Lithuania, but it was closed down anyway because its design was so similar to that of the facility at Chernobyl. The facility opened in 1983 and enjoyed an incident-free existence, save for the identification of a design flaw shortly after it came online. When the tips of the control rods entered the reactor, they caused a brief power surge. 
This flaw is partially to blame for what happened at Chernobyl, but corrective measures had averted any risk of a repeat at Ignalina by the end of 1988. That wasn't good enough for the European Union, who insisted that the plant had to be shut down if Lithuania wanted to join the EU. The country ultimately decided that the political union was more important than the power station and acquiesced on the issue. The first unit was shut down at the end of 2004, with the second unit persisting for five years before being shut down for the last time on the final day of 2009. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!